Hi, uh, good afternoon. Welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Sridhar Kalyana Sundaram, consultant neonatologist. And uh, we have with us again, uh, Dr. Sanya Mariam, who is a pediatric uh, dentist. And uh, as we discussed earlier, she's very well qualified in pediatric dentistry. She has done her training in Chennai as well as in the prestigious postgraduate Institute of Medical Education and Research. So her initial discussion on pediatric dentistry tips for the parents was extremely well received by all of you. And uh, she has come forth to add uh, some frequently asked questions uh, that the parents have about uh, dental care in children. So very nice of you, Dr. Sanya, to come, come forth with this. I uh, appreciate your contribution. And uh, you said you wanted to do a, a screen share. So we'll have that presentation and then we can uh, discuss. Do you wish to go ahead with your screen share presentation? Yeah. So First, most common question which I get right now, especially in this COVID times is, if a child develops a toothache, what should be done? So, with regard to that, first of all, the most common cause of an aggravation of the toothache is some food getting stuck in between the teeth. So, I would recommend you rinse that affected area with warm salt water and in case there's any swelling, to place a cold compress on the face on the side of the swelling. And... Uh, a suitable analgesic may also be given. Some people have a tendency of placing the analgesic directly in contact with the tooth, where the, wherever the toothache is, but that can cause something called as an aspirin burn, a mucosal burn in that region. So please don't do that. And definitely, if possible, see a dentist as soon as possible if a child has a toothache. So another common question which we get is, these are after all milk, teeth so why do we have to treat them we can just let them fall out on its own so this is just like a common scenarios which play out when a child has a toothache first of all they start off with food getting stuck in between the teeth you see them putting pencils or uh, any sharp objects to dislodge that and pain on chewing slowly that increases and if it is left unchecked in some cases it can even result in a facial abscess and a facial swelling uh, this is a very later stage in which it, even IV antibiotics might be needed to bring down the infection. So it is uh, better to treat in the earlier stages rather than wait for a later stage. So the main reason why we treat milk teeth is to prevent this pain and abscess formation. And this also leads to a lot of psychological trauma for the children in the later times. Uh, another common reason why I say we should treat milk teeth is this uh, picture clearly shows that the permanent teeth is positioned exactly below the milk teeth. So when there is an infection in the milk teeth, there is a tracking of the infection from the milk teeth to the underlying permanent teeth. This doesn't happen in all the cases, but there are cases where this results in a hypoplasia of the tooth, especially if it's at the uh, critical time of mineralization of the tooth. So this condition is called Turner's hypoplasia and it can result in a very unesthetic discoloration or even change in size and shape of the tooth, permanent tooth which is there below the milk tooth. And uh, some parents often suggest why don't we just go ahead and pull out the milk tooth anywhere there's a permanent tooth underlying it. Uh, this picture shows that the milk teeth which were affected were pulled out relatively early before the time during which they were supposed to exfoliate. So when the patient was followed up after many years, we found that the permanent teeth, because the milk tooth was extracted early, the adjacent two teeth tend to tip into that space, resulting in inadequate space remaining for the permanent tooth to erupt properly. So this will result in unnecessary crowding. And finally, when the patient undergoes orthodontic treatment, often we have to remove good healthy permanent teeth in order to make space for all the permanent teeth to erupt properly in the mouth. So don't go in for extraction, especially without uh, getting a correct opinion whether the tooth can be saved or not and if a space maintainer is required even after extraction of the milk teeth. Uh, so this is also one of the questions because of uh, the COVID uh, pandemic, many people want to know if they can do anything they can to protect their child's teeth better. So this is just a picture which shows that how there's a balance we have to maintain. If the pathological factors are more, that is the harmful factors are more, then the child will develop caries. However, if we increase the balance towards the protective factors like 
I will be explaining the protective factors a bit with regard to toddlers, what we can do so that we can prevent caries in children. Uh, we have already discussed about toothbrushing and the importance of using a fluoride toothpaste. So in addition to that, um, I would also recommend flossing. Flossing, when should we start is when there are two teeth in co contact with each other, like two permanent teeth are in tight, two milk teeth are in tight contact with each other is when we should be starting to floss. This is a typical spaced dentition in which flossing is not that important. But if your child has a dentition where there is no spacing, where there are tight contacts, then definitely flossing is needed to remove the plaque between the teeth. And once daily or once in two days, as much as often as possible, we can floss. Not necessary every day at least. So this is a video just to show the technique of flossing. Since children don't have the manual dexterity to use a floss by itself to create a loop and to floss the teeth, there are something called floss holders, which can be used and definitely a parent has to floss for the young child. It's a very simple process. Floss under the gums to remove the plaque. Otherwise, if the plaque is not removed of the gum line, it's going to cause gingivitis and it can also cause cavities between the teeth. So you want to floss between the molars too, especially the molars, especially when the teeth, two teeth are touching. I agree it is a little difficult to get a toddler to allow his teeth to be flossed, but definitely if you start early, they kind of think of it as a habit and they might allow you slowly to, for it to be done more frequently. Hug the floss up against the tooth and squeeze. One second. Sir. Another common advice which we tend to give parents is to restrict sugar intake. However, I understand having kids myself to stop children from eating sugar is definitely not possible. So, what you can do is you can try to give sugar at meal times rather than giving it as a snack in between. By looking at this picture, you realize that whenever you eat something sugary, there is acid production and the pH inside the mouth falls. So by restricting the number of times this pH fall happens in the mouth, we can also help uh, to prevent caries. So um, no more than two times in between meals, we can give sugary items. And milk is also a type of sugar. So if you're giving milk two times apart from the meals, that is also counted as a sugar. And anything more than three will definitely increase the chances of dental caries. Uh, we have other methods to uh, prevent caries. They are called as remineralizing agents. There are two types, non-fluoridated and fluoridated. Fluoridated are recommended usually above six years of age. But for the age group, we are talking about that is toddlers, probably up to three or four years. We recommended non-fluoridated remineralizing agents. And this is the one which is most commonly recommended. It's called GC tooth mousse. This has to be applied on the teeth with a finger or a cotton bud. After brushing, just spread it with your tongue and leave it overnight. So overnight, this is there on the tooth as a layer on the tooth and it helps to remineralize the weaker enamel. So apart from these uh, home measures to prevent caries, there are also certain in-office measures. The most common amongst this is use of fluoride varnish. This is also a very, very uh, simple procedure. We're using a small cotton bud or a small paintbrush. The fluoride varnish is just painted onto the teeth and the child is advised not to eat or drink anything for a few hours later, preferably overnight also. So even this helps to mineralize early lesions. That is, even if you have a small white spot on the tooth, by using these remineralizing agents, we can just reverse the caries. This is especially recommended in higher risk children, that is children who are premature or who have low, low birth weight or any kind of uh, special needs because in them to establish good brushing habits, 
a good flossing habits is very difficult so this helps in providing additional care for these uh, children with special needs and uh, another one which i would also recommend is use of sealants the reason is because in the teeth you have these small grooves on the chewing surface of the teeth and however thin the bristles of your brush are they are not able to penetrate into these grooves and remove the plaque from them so in such a case what we recommend is sealants which are placed by the dentist can you can see these brown pits and fissures these are actually early caries lesions but if we are able to seal them with the sealant which solidifies on the surface of the tooth the food source for the bacteria is removed so the bacteria are not able to grow on the tooth and the tooth itself is protected to a large extent from decay in fact studies have shown almost 80 percentage of caries can be reduced on the chewing surfaces of the teeth by using these measures these are the common questions i could think of sir it was very useful and uh, thank you for that uh, discussion as well uh, in terms of aspirin one precaution i would say is uh, we don't prefer to use aspirin in the younger kids i mean there is an association of aspirin with the uh, ray syndrome especially if there is an associated virus i mean obviously i don't know about the dental use but in pediatrics we don't recommend uh, using it topical use uh, it may still get absorbed so if there is a associated viral infection uh, we should avoid using aspirin apart from that i mean the use of sealants is a very good thing my daughter had it when she was young uh, flossing the teeth the holder technique you showed uh, helps even uh, adults i think <laughs> who struggle to floss so appreciate uh, all this advice and i'm sure it will be very helpful uh, i would recommend that anyone who is watching this uh, please mention your questions to dr sanya would be very happy to answer it and we are very lucky to have her here to give us these insights i think uh, do uh, share it with all your friends and relatives because this information is not available to most parents and it's something that all of us should be ideally be aware from the start and preventive dentistry is a concept which is not well established in our population isn't it what would you say dr sanya yes, <laughs> we so, still uh, uh, unless we have a swelling and pain we don't uh, go to the dentist especially i have noticed UK, for example, we have a six-monthly routine. After the teeth start erupting, so they go for a first dental check around one to one and a half years, and then the dentist keeps reminding them to visit every six months. So uh, I don't know how many parents will go, but uh, this uh, use of these uh, GC moves as well as the sealants, they start doing it electively. Uh, the dentist themselves advise, but. For those of us here who don't have the opportunity to meet a dentist regularly, please uh, keep it inbuilt into your system that you start looking into these aspects. And really appreciate your uh, great tips, Dr. Sanya. And thank you very much for being on this uh, channel again. Uh, thank you. I'm sure all of you would appreciate Dr. Sanya's contribution. And please mention in your comments and like the video if you like it. And do share. I'm sure this will be helpful for many families. Thank you.